Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Do your aquarium lights flicker? Now, whether it's the disco effect like this or intermittent, random, off, on, 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 off, 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 etc. It happens to me often enough to think it might be worth making a video about it. So, true, this does tend to happen on the cheaper brands, so your Hygers, your Nycrews, your things like that. I've had it more often on them and this type of light, where it's your LED strips rather than your more high-end stuff. But there tends to be two main areas to look at um, and a couple of things that can make an easy fix if you want to give it a go because even though they are the cheaper end of the spectrum save a few bob always helps in the hobby so first and probably easiest to check is your power supply usually it's a little barrel jack like this um, if you have a second one then that's the easiest thing to do is just plug in the other one and see whether or not you get the same problem if you do get the same problem you've ruled out the power supply if you don't get the same problem it's the power supply or is that the other way around? If you don't have a second power supply, um, you're going to need a multimeter for this. You want to check the output voltage on this to see whether or not you're getting the right thing. And the way to do that is to take your multimeter, put it into voltage DC. Your black end goes on the outside of the barrel jack. The red one goes in the middle and you want to see if you can get 12 volts. If you're getting less than that, then that's the problem. Obviously, you only want to get 12 volts if that's what your plug says it outputs. So usually on the plug there, it'll tell you what the output voltage expected is. So you want to get there or thereabouts that. If it's a few volts out or more, that's the problem. So get on eBay, get on Amazon, wherever it is, order a replacement, and that should get rid of your problems. If it's not the power supply, then there's a couple of places that, in my experience, where it goes wrong on the light itself. Each light is different depending on the make, the brand, um, but generally, so in this one, this is a Huger light. There'll be a point where the power goes into the light itself, so the wires connect to the light board, or you might have like a little power or option selector piece there. Um, both these areas are worth looking. What we're looking for here is generally corrosion. So you use these in aquariums, right? So we've got lots of water around, might be humid environments, anywhere where there's a seal that can possibly get away. Um, moisture can get in, corrode the contacts, and that's where you get your flickering. So in this particular one, obviously this goes here, you'll have to use your own brain for your own particular light, but this one has a couple of screws there. So we can take it a light, take this end out and have a look and see what we've got. On these ones, you undo the screws here and then this bit just pops off. There might be a little bit where you have to just make sure there's a sticker usually over here, make sure that's off and there's nothing stopping it, but you just unscrew with one of these little precision screwdrivers. Shouldn't take too long. Obviously with the unit unplugged at this point, should just pop out like so and then the light board itself should slide out like this but what we're looking for is if I can show you at this end here is where the wires connect to the board and you're looking for signs of corrosion which is usually like some kind of oxidized stuff or a problem or a loose connection in any of these wires again depending on the brand it might look different to you but that to me looks okay um, if I wanted to, I might give it a bit of a clean up if there was a little bit and you're just not sure. I use something like this isopropyl alcohol. Give it a quick squish with that, a rub with a cotton bud and we should be okay. But that looks fine to me, so I don't think that's the problem. Put that back together. The next area might be this bit, so I'll call this a control unit. I'm not sure what it's really called. Um, I've already opened this, but basically you get like a little spudger or something in there. You can crack it open and it should come apart fairly easily, trying not to break anything. And in this version, you get presented with this. And lo and behold, oh look, we have some signs of corrosion. Um, so you see these little rusty parts. Um, they might be blue, green type stuff. It might be brown like this, but you can see here, there's a couple of these switches have got rusty bits on them. And if I turn it over, on this side, along the contacts here, that again looks a bit sus. So I don't like the look of that. That looks like it's gone both rusty and started to oxidize. 
And anything around here with electronics like that, short circuits, any temporary, temperamental behaviour that you're seeing in the lights, it's this kind of thing that causes it. So again, I'm just going to give everything a right good clean uh, with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud. And hopefully that should be it. The kind of nirvana moment that you find here is when you open up something like this, whether it's at this end or whether it's in the light end itself, is a wire is not attached properly. So just give everything a little nudge. Everything should be fairly secure and held in nicely. If not, then you might need to get the soldering iron out and reattach it, but that's a fairly easy do. Um, but give everything a good clean, that should sort us out. So we'll do that. So either pour a little bit of this out into a pot and then you can dip it in. An old paintbrush is good, well, a clean one, or a cotton bud like this. I'm just going to use this and soak the end because this is a squishy bottle. And then take the area oh, that you're trying to clean. So in this case, down here, you can see that, and just give it a good... You don't have to be rough, but you don't have to be too gentle. Um, any areas that look a bit of discoloration, a bit of corrosion, whatever it is that you can see, give it a run over with this. And you should be good to go. Uh, and I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, it's quite a bit coming off there. So we end up with a cotton bud that's pretty disgusting looking. If nothing else, we've not done anything bad, we haven't hurt it more. So it's worth a try. Now put it back together and give it a go. And then once you've got it all back together, it should, in theory, this is where I make a fool of myself, be working again. So obvious caveats that you're avoiding warranties and all this should be done with the proper duty of care and never mess around with electrics. So do everything at your own risk. But you know, what did this take me five minutes? It's worth a go if you want to avoid replacing your lights constantly. Um, as I say, with the cheaper stuff, it happens to me quite a lot. More expensive stuff, not as much. Everything's a little bit different, so take it with a pinch of salt, but you know, I thought it might be a little bit useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any little tips and tricks for things like this, or warnings if I've done something which is potentially endangering people. But other than that, if not, I'll see you on a Friday night, 9pm UK time. We have a live stream every Friday. Come along and join us. Say hello then. Uh, if not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.